What's going on everybody? We got a 2012 Toyota Avalon. We got a used computer we're going to be installing. Actually, the used computer is already installed in this vehicle. I'm going to walk you through the process of just uh, rewriting the VIN, resetting the immobilizer. Really important on the Toyota computers, you get the right uh, base model software. That's the module software. You can only update the calibrations with Toyota TIS. You cannot actually change it if you got the wrong computer. In this example, I'll be demonstrating using the Toyota VIN rewrite software. I'll be honest with you, there are a multitude of scan tools that can do the VIN rewrite on Toyotas. It's not a big deal, but in this example, that's what I did. And we'll go over the security reset procedure. A real quick heads up here, this computer was replaced because I guess uh, some rodents had chewed up a bunch of stuff. So the ECM is actually back in that corner tuck there. So as long as they got the matching part numbers, it should be in good shape. And you can see we got some... Uh, some wiring repairs done, looks like, for a cam sensor. Also, looking around here, I noticed uh, there's a bunch of chew marks on a lot of wires, a lot of harnesses. This thing probably had a lot of issues. So I'm hoping when we get set up here and plugged in that we will find that we do have communication with this computer. To make the job easy, we're going to go ahead and use a DLC breakout box. And we're going to be using our Cardiac 3 Plus as our interface device. And we get our battery maintainer on there as usual. So with this Toyota and a used computer, the first thing I'm going to do is turn the key to the run position. I'm making sure that I do have a check engine light. And we do have a check engine light illuminated. That's always a good thing. If I didn't have a check engine light, I might be concerned. So we're going to go into our Toyota VinWrite software. And we'll see really quickly here if we can actually uh, read the VIN number. So it read the VIN. And I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of our new VIN number or the actual VIN number of this car. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and type that VIN number in. Now this VIN update software is available directly from Toyota. When you have a active subscription to TIS, you can download this. So it says the following VIN, VIN has been written correctly. We're gonna go ahead and click finish. Now I'm gonna tell you a little tip if you uh, search for the keyword immobilizer in Identifix, you might get misled. If you use the keyword registration in Identifix, you'll be on the right path. Let me show you here. So we're going to look up the keyword registration. Type that in. And what we're going to find here is we get a list of uh, different things. We're going to go to, I think, uh, probably diagnostics. Here we are, registration, how to. We're gonna click on engine immobilizer system. And what we're doing is looking for, uh, there's a lot of good information here, but what has been replaced is the engine control module. And I believe it's gonna be at the very bottom. There we go. We're gonna jump for CG, which is your chassis ground, to TC. So if you were to count these out, pin 16 is here. This is one, two, three, four. So pin four. And that would be going to 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 4 to 13. And then this would be 6 and 14 here. Now, Toyota calls this ECU recommunication, uh, is what they may call it sometimes. And it does say that we do have to leave the ignition switch on for 30 minutes. Most times, like probably about 70% of the time I've done Toyotas, maybe 80% of the time I've done these, the key on for 30 minutes is enough to get the security to reset. But I have had a few where I've went 35 minutes or 40 minutes to get it done. So I just kind of generally go about 35 minutes or so just to kind of eliminate any possibilities of it not going through. And that usually works for me. All right, I told you before, uh, we need to have our battery maintainer on there to maintain the battery for a longer period of time. And we would be making our life easier having our uh, diagnostic connector breakout box. So what I'm gonna do here, the key off here, 
I'm going to go ahead and disconnect our J box. This is the reason we want to have our data link connector breakout box. Now I'll show you something. When I turn the key on here, pay attention to the, which lights are flashing. So pay attention to those lights. I'm going to turn the key off. And we need a jumper, terminal number four, which is a ground, to terminal number 13. Now when I turn this key on, let's note the time. I've got 152. Turn the key on, and now let's see if we have any other lights flashing. Looks like we have a cruise light flashing. We have a stability control light flashing on and off. Tire light flashing, airbag light flashing, ABS, everything's going haywire. We're going to let this thing gel for about 35 minutes. All right, so it's been over 35 minutes. And as you see, we still have all the blinkety blinkety going on here. And that's good. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn the key to the off position. And I'm going to disconnect our jumper wire. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it to the run position and crank it up and see if it starts and runs. And we do have a runner. That's beautiful. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the Autel scanner and just do a complete vehicle DTC scan. Okay, we're back. I let that go for a second there. Um, just want to show you guys. So we have no codes and everything except for the engine control module. So I'm going to do a quick report. I want to make a report on this. And then we're going to hit the save button. Save this page. And we're good. So we're going to get out of there. Now let's click on this engine and see if we can figure out what's going on. At the very bottom it says engine mobilizer system current and history. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn the key on, engine off. We're going to do a quick erase. I want to see if that goes away. So it says pass no fault. I always want to do a couple of key cycles. We'll make sure these buttons work. And they do. That's great. Always make notes of that type of stuff. can save you in case something doesn't work later. You can know it. So I'm going to start it up. And I'm going to turn it off one more time. I'm going to go ahead back into the engine. Directly into this module and hit OK. Hit trouble codes, and no codes detected. Looking good here. Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this video. If you like this type of content, please do like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you know of all the new videos we put out. Guys, if you want more in-depth training, go ahead over to handsonautotraining.com. You can go to the membership site. There's free and paid course packages available. Make sure you check that out. I appreciate everybody's uh, support. Have a great day.